Hey everybody, what's going on? Josh here with Scrapyard Films, and today we're going to be doing another Vegas effects tutorial. Today we're going to be learning how to make Doctor Strange's teleportation portal, that sparky looking circle one. I'm going to show you a video of what we're going to be creating right now. And if you want to learn how to do that, stick around. But I do want to let you guys know that my patrons have access to a VIP page on my website and have download access to all of my project files for Vegas Effects and Vegas Pro and the assets that go with them. So what we're going to be creating today is going to be available to download for all my patrons that you can put in all of your footage. So we have Vegas effects open right here. So what we're going to do is click new composite shot and we're going to do 1080p. Let's do the drop down and we're going to do 23.9 frames a second. We're going to change the duration to 20 seconds. And then once we're done with that, let's hit OK. And now sometimes you'll notice when you tell it a specific duration and you go to the very end, it may be a little bit beyond that. So I like to click this little gear down here and then correct it again. 20 exactly. Hit OK and that makes our timeline exactly what we wanted. So let's drag it to the beginning. And so first thing we wanna do is right click on our timeline and we're gonna do a new layer and we're gonna add a point or hold Control, Alt, and P. Once we've created a new point, let's go ahead and rename it. You can either right click and hit rename or hit F2 and we're gonna call it point one, just to be simple. If we go to our media area and we change it to controls and we have this layer selected, we can see all the controls for the layer on this long window instead of this compressed timeline window. So in our controls, we're going to drop down the transform and we're going to change the anchor points Y value. Here's the X and here's the Y. We're going to change that to 500. That's going to move the latching point of our point to up here while keeping the center point right in the dead center of the screen because that's the anchor point. And then while we're on the very first frame, we're going to go to rotation and select the circle next to it and that's going to insert a keyframe. You can verify that by dropping down the menu in the timeline of the point, go to transform and we see rotation and selected and a keyframe has been created. Let's drag this all the way to the right and we're going to make a new keyframe and easily do that by just changing a number. If you make any kind of changes when the timeline is in a different location and a keyframe is enabled over here, then it's going to automatically create a keyframe. So we're going to change this rotation of this number, which this number right here to the left means how many completions of an entire 360 degree rotation have been accomplished. And this one is telling the specific degrees. So with this one, we're going to change the rotation completion to 20. That means it's going to completely spin 20 times in 20 seconds. Once we've done with that, then we can collapse this menu, select point, and we're going to duplicate it by holding control and pressing D. This duplicates it, and then we're going to rename it by pressing F2. I'm going to call it point two. Select it, go up to our controls and our transform, drop that down. And we're going to change a couple things. First thing is we're at the very end of our timeline. So what we want to do is change the degree number to 120 because we don't want it to be exactly on the first point. So then we drag this timeline all the way back to one, change the degree at the end to 120. So it's still going to completely rotate 20 times exactly just in a different spot than the first point. And then once you're done with that, click on the second point and duplicate it one more time because we're going to need three points to make this rotation look like a complete circle. One point is not enough. So on our third point, hit F2 to rename it. And we're going to call it point three. And just like last one, let's select it, go to layer, transform. We're on the very first frame. We're going to change this degree number to 240. And once we're done with that, drag it all the way to the end, change this degree number to 240. And there we go. Now we have three points that are exactly the same distance apart in a rotation of a circle spinning 20 times in 20 seconds. I know it looks like we haven't done much, but we're about to get to the interesting part. Go to your effects tab and then we're going to do search for particle P-A-R-T. And then we're going to bring down a particle simulator. This is not an effect. It's actually a simulation. So it's going to be on its own layer. Drag and drop it in here. And if we go forward in the timeline, you'll see it's shooting some circles at us. We want these circles to be a line behind it as it rotates. So to do that with our particle simulator selected, go to our layer properties 
and we're going to go down to emitters. Drop down emitters, then drop down emitter, and then from here drop down shape. And make sure point is selected, which if you do have that selected, this option comes up and it says attach to layer, and we're going to attach it to point one. And you'll see it moved. If we go back to the very beginning or close to it, we can see that it is attached to the point that is now rotating in a circle that we just accomplished before. So now we have it on point. Let's collapse shape and go down to trajectory. Drop that one down and we don't see much stuff here because we got to change random to cone. And that makes it shoot particles in a cone shape. Now to make this shoot particles in a cone shape going backwards as it rotates forwards, we need to change the Z rotation to 180. And as you see, it's shooting particles behind it as it rotates. Next, we're gonna change this radius to about 25. Now remember this option, trajectory radius. You can change this depending on how you want your circles and sparks to look. So I'm just gonna keep it at 25 for this video. Let's collapse trajectory and then go down to particle systems, then particle system, and then general. Now in here, I'm gonna widen this a little bit for you so we can read everything. So we're gonna go down to seed. I'm gonna change this seed to some random number. I just don't want them to all be the same. So I'm gonna make this 64. And that changes the way these particles come out of the emitter. And then particles per second, we're gonna change this from 50 to a whopping 3000. Now the more particles you add, the heavier it is gonna be on your computer. So eventually this will start slowing down. But we're gonna play it and you're gonna see a ton of particles coming out. It's kind of looking like what we're going for now. Collapse general, and then go down to appearance. And we're gonna change the texture source. We're gonna change it from a circle to a built-in texture because they have a ton of built-in textures. And the one that looks most like what we're gonna need is rain streak. This makes long streaks in the circle. Now this doesn't look like what we want at all. So we're gonna check this box right here, align to motion. Once you select that, the rain streaks are gonna follow the motion of our emitter. And then under here in appearance variation, you're not gonna really see much of what this is gonna do right now. It's gonna show up a little bit later, but texture per second, I like to change this to 25. And that's actually gonna make it a little more jagged, the trails basically. You can adjust this number, but don't go too high with it. Collapse appearance variation, go down to movement. We're gonna keep the life at one second, and we're gonna drop the scale of these to 20, from 100 to 20. Once we've done that, you see our trail is looking a lot more like a cool trail. Now these lines of the particle are gonna represent sparks, but we need to change the speed from 200 to 500. And that makes them go way wider out since it's all following physics in the motion. So it's looking pretty good so far. Now you see why we made two more points because this is just one emitter. So if we scroll down a little bit more in the movement. We're going to change the bounce to 100 and let's change that friction to 75. Now this is gonna come into play a little bit later because we're gonna add a floor and these sparks are gonna bounce off the floor. So let's collapse movement and we are done with this emitter. So I'm going to collapse this emitter right here and we're gonna select it, hit F2 and rename it. We're gonna call it emitter one. And if you haven't guessed by now, we're gonna duplicate this, rename it, call it emitter two and attach it to the second point by dropping down the menu, going to shape, changing the attached layer from point one to point two. And look at that, our circle is getting more complete. Let's collapse emitter two, select it, control D to duplicate it, F2 to rename it, let's call it emitter three. Drop this down, drop shape down, attach to layer, we're gonna select it and choose point three. And now we have a complete circle going on. So let's see what this looks like. And now we have 9,000 particles on the screen at once which is making my computer lag a little bit, but the circle's looking pretty good. Now, before we go any further, we are gonna save our project. We should be doing this way more often, but this is a tutorial and I, you know, I'm just gonna encourage saving right now. So I'm gonna do file, save, save, and we're good to go. So I'm gonna collapse the emitter. Next is we're gonna make a ground. So we collapse our particles and we right click on our timeline. We're gonna add a new layer and we're gonna add a plane. Now in here, we're gonna call this plane ground. You can put it whatever color you want, doesn't matter, we're gonna make it invisible. Hit okay, and it takes up the entire screen. So what we wanna do next is make this ground 3D. So to do that, if we go over to our ground in our timeline and go next to the motion blur icon, we see this little layer dimensions button, select that, and then select 3D plane. Now you're gonna see it automatically adds a camera. A camera has to be there if you have any 3D objects in your scene. So just ignore that camera, it doesn't matter. 
So now we have our ground in a 3D plane. With this layer selected, go up to your controls, go down to transform, and we're gonna move the Y position right here to negative 500, which means it's gonna be at the exact bottom of our circles and their entire rotation. Then we're gonna go to rotation X, we're gonna select our degree value and do 90. And that's gonna make it 90 degrees right here. So it's a floor exactly where the bottom of our portal hits. Let's go down to our timeline, go to our ground and select the eyeball and we have muted it so it's invisible but it still is there. So we're done with our ground. Let's go back to particle simulation. Let's select that and the layers and then go down to deflectors. Select the plus sign and then we're going to drop down this deflector and then we're going to go over to shape, change cuboid to layer and then drop down shape and that adds this source layer option. Select it and we're going to choose our ground. So we're basically making these deflect off the ground. So if we drag this back and forth, you'll see what it's doing. As we play it, this is bouncing off the ground, giving it a little more realism. Next thing we're gonna do is make this portal look like a portal by adding some color to it. So if we go to our effects tab, delete part and type in glow, we're gonna find a bunch of glow options. And what I wanna do is choose just the regular lights and flares glow, select it and drag it onto our effects. Once we've done that, we're gonna take the drop down here and change the intensity to 1.5. Hit enter, and you're gonna see it's gonna really beef up the light in here. Now again, it's still white and that's perfectly fine. We're gonna leave the threshold the same and we're gonna change the radius to 15 pixels. And that's gonna really centralize the glow. Then we go to per channel intensity, drop that down, change the red to two, the green 1.5, which gives it more of a yellowy orange feel, and the blue to 0 0.75. Now we got kind of a orangey yellow portal, but it still doesn't look like the portal. So what we're gonna do is add another glow. Let's collapse this one, select it, hold control and press D and we have duplicated it and you can see it's looking a lot better. So let's drop this second glow down here. And if you wanted this first glow, we can select it and hit F2 to rename it to glow one, just so we're not confused. And then rename this one F2 to glow two. So for the intensity of glow two, we're gonna change this to 0.7, keep the threshold at 40. But for the radius, we're gonna put this up to a whopping 250 pixels. And that's gonna make the entire scene kind of look a lot better. Now I missed one part for blend on this one. We're actually going to change this from screen to add and you're going to see whoo, it just lights up beautifully. We're going to do the same thing for glow one. Change the blend from screen to add. And then, wow, that is really brightened it up. Godly looking. Collapse glow one because we're not going to use that one anymore. Go down to the per channel intensity of glow two. We're going to keep the red at two. We're going to put the green to 0.5, giving it a lot more red. And then we're going to put the blue to zero. And now we have a really glowing, fiery look. So again, adding glow effect, especially duplicating it with 9,000 particles on the screen if we play it, it's going to be a little bit laggy. But it's looking really good so far. Now, a little something to know is once you've added a 3D plane, I'm going to go to the timeline here and collapse this. You see that our ground is on a 3D plane and we have a camera. That actually opens up a little bit more controls for the preview window. So if you hold Alt, you can do a couple things. If you hold Alt and click and drag the right mouse button down, you're going to zoom out. So you can see the whole thing in frame, in action. If you press play, that's what it looks like. Now, if you wanted, if you hold Alt and left click and then drag the screen around, you're going to see this in a 3D plane. This is going to help with rendering. So if you wanted to render at this angle right here, you can do so. If you want to render here, you can do it. If you want to render exactly the side of it, you can totally do that. And that's going to wrap up creating this effect inside Vegas Effects. So if you want to see what it looks like, load up Vegas and drop some footage in there of your choice, and then drag your footage in right here. And you're going to see it's going to go black, but we select it, we have our portal. So we play it, you know, it's black background. What's going on over there? All you got to do is go to your track effects to the left, go down to compositing mode, and then choose screen. Once you've done that, you now have this portal in your scene. And there you have it, it's as easy as that. If you wanted to skip all of this and then just download these composites that I've made and mastered, you can easily do that as a patron because I give all my patrons all my project files and all my assets for download on my website for being awesome patrons and helping support the channel. It's only a dollar a month and you get a ton of perks. You can check the description below for the Patreon perks.
But that is going to wrap it up entirely. At the bottom left, you can shoot this video if you like, if you learned something, and maybe you can subscribe because I got a ton of other tutorials on my channel, Scrapyard Films. So thanks again for watching, guys, and I'll see y'all in the next video. And I'd like to give a special shout out to my super patrons, HPL Gamers and LMC.